Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here. Today is Friday, August 26, 2016, and coming up on Monday, August 29, 2016, there's some big news and some big stuff going into effect that affects people like me and maybe people like you if you are the pilot of one of these guys. Um, what's happening on the 29th is the FAA is putting into effect their brand new small UAS rule called Part 107 that's going to allow operators to get licensed to fly drones and other UAS vehicles commercially, meaning we can finally get paid um, and these can become actual cinematic tools that you can get licensed to use. <clears throat> now, the FAA has been working for quite a while to try and figure out how to deal with drones and small aircraft like this. Um, and what they did over the past uh, year or two is they came up with a new set of rules that would apply to these vehicles specifically and so that they wouldn't have to be governed by the rules that govern full-scale air aircraft. Because uh, that just didn't make sense. These aren't full-scale aircraft. So back in June, they announced their proposed rules uh, in the form of Part 107. Um, and this rule had all of the details and everything that you're going to need to get licensed uh, to fly one of these commercially, and also has all the rules and regulations in terms of how high you can fly, uh, how far you can fly, and other sort of safety things that you have to have in place to be able to fly. Now, I won't go into all of that information because there is a lot of it, but I do want to share some resources with you guys so that you can go ahead and check it out and get yourself all up to date on what you can and can't do uh, with drones and small UAS vehicles, um, and also how to get yourself licensed. So, like I said, everything goes into effect on the 29th, on Monday. Um, and what also goes live on Monday is going to be the brand new test that the FAA is putting out that allows you to get a license. Uh, so this test is rumored to be about 60 multiple choice questions. Um, you have to score about 70% or higher to get licensed. Um, and then what you can do is uh, you are able to use your drone commercially. Now, there's a lot of stuff you're going to need to do in the first place. Now, this does not change any of the rulings that are already in place in terms of registering your drone. You still do need to register any drone that you own or operate, um, whether it be commercially or recreationally. Now, the FAA has made it very easy to do that. They have a website set up. It's called registermyuas.faa.gov and you can go ahead on there and you can set up an account and you can go ahead and get issued a license number. And what this is is basically like a license plate for your drone. So then you can either write it on, etch it on, or what I do is print it out on a, uh, a label maker. Just print your number and stick it on every drone that you have. Basically, it's just an identifier saying that this drone is registered to me. Um, and so I have several, and so they each have the same number posted on them. It only costs about five bucks, I believe. Um, it's really not a big deal. Um, so go ahead and get that registered because you're going to need to do that. So the very next thing that you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to look into what these new rules are for Part 107, both for recreational use and for commercial use. So the FAA has all of that information up on their website as well. You can go to faa.gov backslash UAS and they have all of the information you could ever want right in there. Um, they have, uh, you can go in and you can actually see what the new guidelines are. Um, they've got all the details laid out for you for commercial and non-commercial use. Then they even have a segment here for the test prep. Uh, so it'll show you sort of what's going to be on the test. And then it also allows you to go ahead and see where the testing centers are in your area. It has them listed by city and state because you will need to go to a certified testing center to go and take the test once you are ready. Now, you're gonna want to brush up on your knowledge uh, in order to go ahead and take this test. Obviously, the test hasn't been released yet, so I don't know exactly what is on it, but there are some companies out there uh, that have the inside track and have an idea and have prepared some test prep courses. Now, one that I found and that I have personally enrolled in is called dronepilotgroundschool.com um, and they have an online test prep course that consists of 30 plus lectures and a whole bunch of other stuff. So you can go ahead and check out everything that they offer on here and it's sort of a go at your own pace 
uh, environment that'll train you. They have quizzes, they have all sorts of uh, dummy tests and stuff that you can do along the way to get yourself ready. Now this particular course is kind of expensive. It is $299, so just under $300. Um, but I think that I'd rather pay the money and make sure that I learn more than I need to uh, so that when I do take the test, if I learn ex excess information, it's still good information for me to know to make sure that I fly and operate safely. Now, I don't have any affiliation with dronepilotgroundschool.com. Uh, I just stumbled across it and it seems to be a really, really complete course. So that's why I went ahead and checked it out. But feel free to search out other test prep options for yourself if the license is something that you're looking to get into. So if you go ahead and after Monday, August 29th, 2016, you go take the test, uh, pass the test, get your license, uh, congratulations, uh, you'll be uh, certified to operate your drone commercially, which is what I hope to be able to do very soon, uh, as soon as I take the test myself. Um, now, do familiarize with all yourself with all of the rules and regulations for flying drones. Just because you have the license doesn't mean you can go and do whatever you want. You still want to make sure that you go and check out all those rules on the FAA website in terms of, you know, flying line of sight, no flying at night, keeping it under 400 feet. A lot of that stuff still applies, so make sure you're still obeying the rules and flying safe. Um, also, restricted areas are no different after you are licensed. This means that no flying within five miles of an airport, no flying within 15 miles of where I live, Washington, D.C., uh, no flying in national parks. Um, so I know there's a lot of restrictions and it can be difficult to keep track of them all, but the FAA, available on their website, has an app that's available for uh, iOS devices as well as Android devices in the Google Play Store and it's called Before You Fly and this is a fantastic app you go in there all you do is allow it to see your location and it'll pull up in your location and show you if there are any restrictions and if you're allowed to fly there or not so it can't be any easier than that guys uh, the FAA I think has done a really good job of laying all this out setting these websites up uh, a lot of times government websites can be really convoluted and difficult to navigate but I think they've got their websites and all their information set up in a way that's very easy for us to understand, easy for us to access. Um, I'm really happy that they created this new class of license that's going to allow me to uh, fly commercially and make money with my drone without having to worry about any of the legal repercussions uh, because now it'll be okay and I'll actually have documentation to say that. So guys, I encourage you to go ahead and check out all of this information. If commercial drone flying is something that you think uh, is gonna be a benefit to you and something that you wanna get licensed for, after August 29th, 2016, the test will be available. Test prep is all available right now. Um, go get yourself ready, go get yourself licensed and uh, start making some paychecks with your drone. All right guys, I hope this was helpful. Fly safe out there and I'll see you guys next time.